that I was shocked or deeply surprised mm -hmm. by anything, but um, there are a couple central themes that come mm -hmm. out in the book uh, that are perhaps particular to the Mennonite story at this moment in our history. Uh, in very general terms, Mennonites entered the uh, world of education at moments in their history when it felt like uh, their theological and social communal ties that had mm -hmm. been maintained in mm -hmm. families and congregations were being threatened or challenged or mm -hmm. were fraying and that it was necessary, this was partic would be particularly true in the years around, between the World Wars, mm -hmm. between World War I, World War right. II, and then immediately after World War II, where distinctive Mennonite uh, theological convictions, matters of faith and practice, were being um, uh, challenged. Mm -hmm. And so, in many instances, Mennonites uh, created schools, church schools, as a kind of, um, in a somewhat defensive posture, with the goal of preserving a legacy mm -hmm. of faith and transmitting that legacy of faith and practice to their own children. Mm -hmm. And so, overwhelming majority of students in Mennonite schools soon after they were founded were Mennonites. Mm -hmm. The teachers were often local Mennonite pre pastors. Mm -hmm. The school bus drivers were volunteers from local Mennonite congregations. The support came from mm -hmm. congregations, the conference, mm -hmm. and they were very much Mennonite schools. That uh, has changed dramatically at all levels of education, mm -hmm. from elementary to secondary, post-secondary mm -hmm. to seminary, so that today a significant um, part of uh, the students attending mm -hmm. are, are, are not from Mennonite mm -hmm. background, are attracted for other other reasons. Mm -hmm. um, that's a huge shift, and it's a yeah. shift that we have all recognized, but I don't think we fully accounted for. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I would say in the Mennonite Church in general, there's also been a parallel shift in terms of a growing um, uncertainty about Anabaptist Mennonite identity mm. in congregations. Mm -hmm. Uh, in both instances, in congregations and in schools, there is a greater um, openness to think about a missional witness, to mm -hmm. think about our congregations and our church schools not as defensive retreats, but as a public expression of what it means to be in this tradition and welcoming of people of other traditions. At the same time, I would say we have a deep embarrassment mm -hmm. about the particularity of mm -hmm. our identity. Mm -hmm. And we think, this is a generalization, but we <laughs> tend to think in congregations and in schools that the particularity of an Anabaptist or a Mennonite identity is going to be at cross purposes with the increasingly mm -hmm. missional, mm -hmm. diverse nature of our student body. Uh, and that is uh, a profound challenge that I'm not sure we're handling very well and that I hope this book will help mm -hmm. to um, give us more confidence mm -hmm. in, uh, um, in addressing. And the nature of education, the, the whole world of, of education mm -hmm. continues to change in yeah. fairly significant ways mm -hmm. in our, in our uh, culture. Uh, the cost of education, the financial realities, are increasingly a challenge. Um, the kind of professionalization uh, and the increased expectations of services. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, many of these Mennonite schools began as local initiatives. You know, the the athletic teams <laughs> uh, played in you know barns or I don't know, the <laughs> baseball team practiced in the meadow or and and people, you know, the cafeteria, the libraries were rudimentary. Well, our expectations of patrons and supporters of the schools at all levels have, we're not, set, we're not content with that anymore. <laughs> we want to have nice gyms. We want to have uh, gleaming facilities. Mm -hmm. And all that costs money. Mm 
-hmm. We want to provide services both to the very gifted and to the uh, right. students who are struggling. That costs money, and that means that we then need fundraising mechanisms, and we need newsletters, and we need PR <laughs> uh, departments, and we need capital campaigns and consultants to run those capital campaigns. And it's just a much more uh, complex, mm -hmm. in some ways sophisticated, uh, but you can also lose your way. Uh, mm -hmm. Or you can, it, it, it becomes increasingly a challenge to remain um, clear about mission, purpose, calling, ownership, mm -hmm. who owns the schools. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and those are shared challenges, um, but they're real.